Hi, welcome back. In this video, we want to discuss a bit um, the story behind us decided to do, deciding to live on this world tour expedition and also a bit of background story on Albatros and how we found the car and uh, why we chose that car. Uh, we did mention bits and pieces of why we left in previous videos, but we thought it would be good to go through the whole story. Um, it was a few years back now, probably, yeah, three years, good three years back now. Um, I think we always were inspired by people traveling around. Um, at that time, we were in our first jobs, you know, very motivated, very much into it. But we were settled in, in two big towns in Europe where it was just not the plan. Uh, we really wanted to travel and it got us thinking, you know, like, was it what we were dreaming about, you know, like living and working in Brussels and Paris? Where were, were there like other things that we wanted to do in our life? And then Nick asked, you know, like, what do we want to do before dying? You know, it's a bit of a of a gloomy thought, but it's, uh, I think it's an important question because you can die in 80 years or tomorrow. So that get, got us thinking, you know, um, maybe that like one thing we want to do before dying is not uh, building a whole career in Paris or buying a new watch or, you know, going two weeks on holidays in a very luxurious hotel. So, we actually came up with the fact that we wanted to discover more, see more of the world, like travel through many countries, and we would really regret it if we don't do that uh, before it's too late. And like this, the, the seeds were planted. Uh, we started thinking about the world tour, and it became more and more of um, something we were like obstinate about, you know, like we would keep thinking about so that's a bit like how we we started thinking about that and then like i think we both developed our own reasons because the the you know the inspiration of it a lot of people think about yeah we want to do a world tour but then how do you translate it in the decision of we want to do this it's a dream and it's going to happen now we thought oh that's the kind of thing people sometimes do when they retire for us, it didn't make sense, you know, like we don't know if we're going to make it till 65 years old or 70. It's something that needed to happen now because I think we also see it as a way of growing, of learning new stuff. And we wanted to experience it now with our uh, age and like with the state of the world as the moment. At the moment, we thought it would be kind of the moment to do it. So, yeah, it started with a bit of a you know, heavy thought process, you know, like, oh, what are you going to regret if you don't do it, if you don't do it? But eventually it became something like very inspiring where we realized that our life, we loved our job, we loved our life, but it was not enough. And we had so much more to learn um, that we wanted to jump into that adventure. Yeah, um, that's in really quickly what we how we got to that process uh we had multiple things going 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 on in our minds it was what can we do more than just work uh, the nine to five job was great uh the, the pay was fine uh the friends were good the only thing is we're thinking we want more so uh, an adventure throughout the world was something we wanted to do before our, our deathbed that's what we call it so like our dream was once we're on our deathbed together, what is the one thing which would be like, ah, oh, sucks we didn't do. And then sort of all that thinking came together. Road trips, we'd done multiple before and we never wanted those trips to end. So we said, yeah, it totally makes sense that we do one that never ends. Well, technically three years is, has an end, but it feels like it never ends when you start it. Um, then we did something called the Catrel Trophy, which is a race in the desert. And we'll actually make another video about this because we actually had filmed it and we made a video just for family and friends in 2020. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll remake another one uh, or we'll just reuse that one to show you what it was. But we did that race in Morocco where it was like a solidarity race where we had to bring uh, a few goods, uh, educational or health goods to um, the kids of the desert. So it's like an association that managed that. And we did that race 
uh, by, you know, it's like, uh, it's a race in the desert and we did really well in that race and we noticed that we wanted to do more of those type of adventures. So it's sort of mixed between, we wanted more than the job, we wanted to continue road trips that never ended, we wanted to do it our own way, so our own road trip without following a paid uh, trip uh, or adventure or uh, route. And then a final um, choice that we've decided to do it now is because dreams, they always change. And so right now we're both 28. And when we started thinking about this, we were 25, 26. And uh, the world is changing very fast. Electric cars now in Europe are, it's a huge thing around the world as well. Cars that can go all over the world are changing as well. The fenders are cars that are functional now, Toyotas as well. But who knows what they are in 30 years, 40 years. Can you do the same type of trip? The uh, world is globalized and is grow getting more and more globalized. So it's uh, things might not have that uniqueness anymore. So anyways, we said it's not too late. It is a bit late, but it's fine. We can also do, still have enjoy um, this trip right now. So there's a lot of things that came together. Uh, one final thing as well, actually, that I just remembered was um, we wanted to live elsewhere. So we said, okay, we can quit our jobs and go live somewhere else. I've always personally wanted South Africa or Kenya, my told one in Brazil. And so we're thinking we could just... Uh, find jobs in those countries and the first person between the two of us who finds the right job who pays well and has security and everything will will both go and the second person who didn't get that job will uh, will search for one in that country and so we had so many ideas that were all in parallel and we felt like we were losing a bit sort of sense of the project and so we said let's just do a world tour and out of the 90 countries we're going to do hopefully we'll find one which we both enjoyed and we'll find a job there so all these things come together the conclusion and the answer to them all was sort of this whole trip, all of it. So we said, okay, let's look into it. And that's how we slowly got into it. We started reading on blogs, checking on uh, online, uh, looking at other travelers on Instagram, YouTube. And we noticed that it was doable and sort of, uh, yeah, uh, affordable as well. So we said, okay, let's do it. And uh, that's, that's the story behind why we're doing this world tour. Uh, we weren't running away from anything. We just wanted more of something and we just wanted to experience something different than the nine to five job. Um, so that's the story behind the car. Is there anything else you wanted to say? No. No. Okay. Then a lot of people have been asking what's the story behind Albatross. Albatross is our Land Rover Defender 110. Uh, and so the story behind Albatross is we like the idea of having a pop-up roof tent like we do, being able to stand inside the car. We took the Defender because in Europe, where we're from, it's, uh, it's really expensive to have a Land Cruiser, but also the taxes are very high because of the pollution compared to the Defenders. Also the pricing, but also because of the taxing. So we left, we started with a Defender, so this is the story. We found it in France, in the middle of nowhere, right in the middle of France. Uh, we had seen it on a, on a sales website and we knew that was the one we were looking for. We had a few alerts on and I was looking at them almost every day and one day that one came out and I was like, yep, that's the one. And we took our car from Brussels and we went straight to her house, checked, it out, checked out the car if it was really like the description and the photos. It really all matched and so we said, okay, we're going with it. We made a wire transfer directly to the, to the previous owner and of course it takes a few days to reach the person's account but she was like, yeah, don't worry, you can go and go ahead with the car. I believe you, you have a cool project, go ahead. And uh, yeah, she was really nice. She made us lunch. And then we went back with the two cars to, to Brussels. And that was the first time we ever had the car. Uh, so it was our own personal purchase. It was a big investment, but uh, we had worked already for two years, putting aside for the vehicle, plus installations, plus then the trip itself. Um, and then we did a lot of work on it. The car was prepared. It had a lot of uh, installations, for example, the interior uh, drawers, uh, it already had the bigger tires, it already had changed suspensions, um, reinforced uh, parts below the car. Nothing had been done to the engine uh, except that it had been changed uh, two, three years before we purchased it because it had a problem. So it had a few installations to go off-road and to travel with, but it wasn't as today. Today we really did a lot of installation. It took us about a year and a half of work. Uh, we did some parts ourselves. We put or some parts were done by the garage. And what we mostly did is more comfortable parts to make it more world tour worthy. So it means hot shower. Uh, it has to have more, let's say, a comfy feel, like like colored 
couches. So Mathilde was uh, sewing different couches. Uh, inside, we made things easy. So for example, you know, when you're at home, you just want to put your hand out and get what you can without having to like open a bag and unlock things and whatever. And so we made everything really easy and comfortable. So we just had to pull out a hand and things would function without having to open bags and things to pick up what we wanted. Um, yeah, is there anything else for the car? Yeah, we changed quite a lot of things under the car as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that took a bit of time. Then they installed a new like pre-diesel filter for the engine. Um, so yeah, there was also like a lot that you changed in mechanics to make it a bit more reliable on the road because I mean, Nick improved a lot and learned a lot during this process, but we're not great mechanics, so we're going to have to learn a lot. But we also wanted to live with a car that was as like prepared as possible to avoid like big problems, at least on the first six months to when you have the trip. Yeah, and anyone who is watching this video and has a Defender knows that apparently Defenders always have problems and leaks. We have never had a leak since our two years of having this Defender. so. These are the small little things that we did uh, sort of just to you know, maximize the, the function of the car without having any problems. It'll come at some point and when it comes, we'll see what we do. But anyways, that's sort of the story of why this trip, why now and why a Defender. Uh, nothing special about it. It's just us wanting to enjoy the moment now and do something more than what we've been doing before and to go in our own rhythm, go with our own car, see the countries we want to see, uh, and just enjoy as much as we can what we want. And uh, of course, the plans will change maybe 20, 30 times by the time we finish the three years. But for now, the mission is to do that. Uh, three years is long, but it's also very short, especially when you're doing 90 countries. But uh, we don't have the budget to do more. Uh, so for now, that's the plan. We'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. If you want to see more on the car, we have a few built videos, so you can check them out. And then we have a number of videos on um, the main topics related to the organization of the trip, if you're interested in understanding how we planned it, some of the key questions we ask ourselves, uh, the material we're taking with us, etc., etc. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let us know in comment if there's other videos you'd like us to do. And if it makes sense to us, then we'll, we'll try and make one. Anyways, take care and I hope you enjoyed the next videos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.